ride down, make sure your cinch is tight. Horse is kind of snuffy, cold chill up your spine. You'll get your ass moving some more burning daylight. Kinley and we're burning daylight. Welcome to Burning Daylight, the only podcast for the working cowboy. We cowboy around and work and and then they try to portray, you know, the cowboy scene on a TV or a movie or something like that. We have a tendency to nitpick it and pick it apart. Well, there's some reason that they can do stuff, and then there's some reasons that they can't do some stuff. So yeah, you uh, huh. kind of get a little in depth perception of it, you know, and it's it's pretty cool actually. I bet I and let's we'll uh, we'll get way more into that because I'm I'm really curious as to how all that kind of went down but i uh yeah. i just I, I don't know i thought this kind of was uh it's kind of a sweet deal um but I, I i imagine you were kind of like me where you grew up on baxter black and paul harvey yeah exactly and uh and yeah. those were just like american institutions and uh well baxter black's been having some health issues and of course i don't know how old he is but he's he's you know he's getting up there and I I think he they they just said he went into hospice, but he he wrote his, his final article and then he retired. And so I I wanted to read that because I I really like it, and uh, and it's Thank called you. Horse Matters. Uh, it says I like living some place where a horse matters. There's just some country where horseback is the only way to get get the job done. Places where the four-wheeler is a poor second, not to mention a noisy track leaving unnatural conveyance. Besides, it's hard to throw a rope from. Helicopters can spot and scare if that's what you need, but it's helpless when you have to doctor a calf. It is a great feeling to be pushing a cow out of a mesquite thicket, packing a dude down the Grand Canyon, or tracking a mountain lion on a high ridge, knowing you're on the perfect tool for the job. You look at a horse different when he's on the payroll. I like being a person to whom a horse matters. That puts me in such good company as Robert E. Lee, Teddy Roosevelt, Rudyard Kipling, Ray Hunt, Queen Elizabeth, Jerry D.E.S., Casey Tibbs, Cowboys, Mongols, Gauchos, Teamsters, Lippas Honors, and Vaqueros of all kinds. Granted, being a horse person doesn't make me easier to get along with, better at spelling, or richer simply gives me a direct connection to one of the most ancient, mutually beneficial interspecies relationships on the planet. Winston, oh, go ahead. Um, hey, uh, Winston Churchill said, there is something about the outside of a horse that is good for the inside of a man. I like being there when a horse matters. When you can't get the job done alone, a cow in a bog, a race against time, a boulder to move, a detour to take, a mountain to cross, a crevice to leap, a war to win, a sweetheart to impress, or when you've gone too far to walk back. Shakespeare's King Richard III said when hate, fate hung in balance, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. I've also come to believe that you either are a horse person or you aren't. Many who are never know it because they never have the chance. It's a primitive acceptance, often mutual, a lack of fear. You see it in some children when they are first introduced to a horse. It always gives me a sense of wonder to be there and help them make their acquaintance. I believe the horse can sense the child's innate trust, the beginning of a natural bond. I count myself very lucky that when I get back to be a part of the wonderful world of horse sweat, soft noses, close calls, and twilight on the trail. I like living a life where a horse matters. <coughs> and, uh, man, as usual, uh, well done by Baxter Black. That, that man has a way with words. No doubt. I, no uh, doubt. I just, uh, like I said, that's kind of a, it's a bittersweet deal. I've, uh, 
you know, I, I there, there's times where I'll go a year or two without ever um, hearing uh, or reading one of Baxter Black's articles. But every now and then, you know, you're you're waiting at the feed store or something, and you, you pick up the fence post, and you know, you always got to go mm-hmm. find on the edge of common sense. And uh, yep, it'll be uh, it'll be sure weird not seeing that from from here on out. But I, uh, boy, you had a good run. No doubt. Hopefully we all yeah. run like. Yeah, for sure, man. That's uh, I mean, just what what a legend. Um, but I I liked how I like how he he put it, and that's uh, you know, for his last article, that's that's something pretty cool, and uh, he's just he's kind of a throwback, and I think we all are kind of a throwback, and uh, and it kind of leads in perfectly to our our conversation that we were we were uh going to is uh you you were on the production of the 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 show 1883 just uh just wrapped up here and uh or at least the filming wise it's still uh i th- i'm this is the first show in a long time that i'm actually up to date on so that's that's kind of a, <laughs> a that's kind of a big win for me um but uh it, it's a it's a a throwback show it's uh old west uh you know uh series and back back to when people uh yeah a horse mattered a lot a lot more back in those days and uh i uh i i just you know i i've i've watched like i said i'm up to date on the show and i think it's really well done and uh i i'm just curious like what, what what's your what's your uh uh, thoughts on it so far? Like, as, how's the feedback been? The feedback's been unreal. You know, I think everybody has kind of taken to it. Everybody is, you know, and I say everybody in general is like, you know, people, people that come in contact with me, what I read, what I see, what I see on Facebook and social media. Yet, excuse me, I've kind of lost my voice. I kind of got the old. Oh, it's all right. Uh, got the old crud, I guess, or sign aside, anyways. The COVID, you know, you can't get sick without getting the COVID. Oh yeah. Thing, so you, you got the got... you got the Delta Cron <laughs> and the and the flu rona and uh <laughs> I think it, well, I got the strangles, I think. I think I got the strangles. Oh yeah, shit. And, that that's that's yeah. bad. Hey, you can at least take some ivermectin for that since it's a yeah, if exactly. that's if it's so, a horse I, disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now back to uh, 1883. It was uh, from everything that I've seen and everybody that I've visited with, and everybody really likes it. You know, I mean, they're just like you. It's like, hey, it's well done. It's cool. You know, it's got a, it's got the old west to it, but it's also got some kind of a. It's not just a shoot 'em up, bang, kill the bad guys, the good guys win. I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind yeah. of a show about life. You know, I mean, how life is, like what what life throws at you and if you can take it or if you can't take it or, you know I mean? Using your head and being smart about doing things a certain way. And, uh, you know, and back then the week didn't survive, you know I mean? You died. If you weren't smart enough not to drink the water and you got sick and you, you threw up and shit yourself to death, that was just your fault, you know? Then, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it didn't take much to die back sick. then. Yeah, no, you know, you squatted on a rattlesnake. Nowadays, if somebody gets bit by a rattlesnake, you can go, you know, make a phone call, and in five minutes they'll have antivenom in you, and you're good. But you know, back then, oh yeah, when you're when you're in the middle between San Antonio and Fort Worth, and the rattlesnake bites you, and there's no towns near you, it uh, might be a little difficult to get to where you need to get to before you die. So, you know, it just shows the trivial the, the trials and tribulation of the man that came up the trail and that had the heart and the soul and the balls enough to strike out where it's unknown and go see some different country, you know I mean? It, it, it's cool. It's, it kind of brings back that old primitive, I guess, nomadic nature of mankind, the way we were designed. And yeah. I think people are really reaching for that right now. You know what I mean? Because everything in this world is so, at your fingertips, just like you and I talking on the phone, you know, we can have a mm-hmm. conversation here in Nevada and I'm in Brock, Texas. So, you know I mean? It's a, 
it's one of them deals where everybody's kind of reaching out for that stuff right now and they they want some real they want they want to see what it was uh or at least kind of feel like they kind of see what it was you know and so i think in that term it's gonna it's blown up no doubt about it i think it's gonna do more than that i think it's gonna create a what you would call a turn back you know uh to mm-hmm. smoke days uh, the you know bonanza and you know, I mean, those kind of westerns that you and I watched as a kid. Yeah, but mixed on, with like the Sopranos. Yeah, it came on every week, you know. So yeah, I think it's I think it'll do some good for our industry. Any of the western industry or anything that touches the western industry will benefit. Which you know, as cowboys, you and I both are, we'll benefit from it some form fashion you know shape form or fashion so you know and everybody that's involved yeah there's some soap opera stuff and yeah there's some technical stuff that you don't necessarily do or you don't necessarily see or you know but it's it's all it's good i mean okay yeah yeah, you can pick it apart but in all in all it's good for our industry it's good for our people it's good for our cause you know i uh there's if you're looking for, it's like with the the lefties and and racism. If you look hard enough, you can find racism anywhere yeah. you want to. If if you if you can you jump through enough hoops, and if you if you go through scene by scene with a fine tooth comb, I'm sure you could write a book about something that uh, a cowboy wouldn't have done. But I mean, if you go to any cowboy, they'll tell you what's wrong with everything around you. Not not just a movie, but exactly. everything. And uh, exactly. so uh, we're we're the bitchinest bitchinest bunch of guys on earth. I I, I tell you. I mean, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. But it's it's the truth. Yeah, you no know, doubt. That, just we cowboy, cowboys in general. Uh, if it's raining. We bitch if it's cold. We bitch if it's too <laughs> hot. We bitch if it's too dry. You know, if it's too wet. Yeah. We bitch because the cattle market sucks. We bitch because horses are high. You know, I mean, it's diesel's high. Trucks are high. We. I mean, yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> But like you say, we wouldn't have it any other way. That's just us. Yeah, we, we bitch about uh, about the farmers, and then we bitch about how nice it would be to uh, be a farmer this time of year. And uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, it's just yeah. it's just we bitch about everything. But that's that's just part of life, because uh, you know the 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 reality of it is it's it's not a real glamorous job. There there's some some moments oh. that are that can be. Uh, but and I guess it'll it'll always be more glamorous than uh, your typical office job. But when you get right down to it, cowboys just kind of it just work. It's work. It's work. You know, yeah. it is. It's work. It's a. Uh, it's work that a lot of people can't do. A lot of people won't do, and it's work that you know, just like you now and, and everybody else involved in it, we take a very very large amount of pride in that because we do stuff that a lot of people can't do to be real honest with yeah. you yeah that's 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 true and uh you know like going back to to uh a, 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 the, just that story behind 1883 which it's you know it, it's kind of a conglomeration of of the old texas uh ranches you know or uh, which eventually became you know a lot of them became montana ranches but like charlie goodnight and oliver loving you know they were they were a little bit they they started before 1883 quite a bit before 1883 but yeah they exactly they they gathered cattle and pushed them to colorado because the miners needed beef like they they weren't cowboys at the time but they they turned into cowboys and they turned into cowmen because there was exactly. a need for it, and uh, they were the people willing to do it, and and it's just like that's that's where we. I mean that that's, I, I mean it's not where we got our start, but that, like that's a good example of like how we got you know the, to to modern cowboy. It's just a guy back that that had had to provide beef for for people during the Civil War, and the only way to get the beef to him was to drive him afoot. Exactly. It yeah, was, uh, it's, a, uh, it's wild. It is wild, you know. I mean, you think about it, and, and back to the 1883 series that I was on, you know, I mean, 
even filming that, we had to travel from Texas to Montana in modern in modern day time, you know, in trucks and trailers, and you know, we hauled we hauled uh, sixty five. I think we all ended up hauling sixty five head of horses right around there, sixty five, seventy five head of horses to Montana. We hauled forty five head of cows, and then you know, I mean, we we filmed up there. We drove them cows quite a bit around in Montana, you know, wagons and people and all that stuff goes up there. You know, it's kind of like a modern day trail drive, but, uh, mm. and it was still different. You know, you take that many people, that much product, <clears throat> excuse me. And you got, you know, I mean, you got trucks breaking down, you got trailers dropping wheels, typical stuff that when you're hauling livestock that happens. And, you know, nowadays you can, pick your phone up and you can call and you, you just sit back and you think about back then them guys are out there on their own you know i mean they were thousands of miles from anybody without any help except themselves mm-hmm. and it's like it's it's surreal it's like damn them guys are tough i mean they were straight up tough 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 cookies you know i mean oh no man. doubt about it well it then was, like uh, unbelievable that uh heat they got it done oh man it's it's insane and then like you you go to like this the the main character tim oh tim mcgraw playing john dutton he's a tennessee farmer turned cattleman and he imagined yeah. just like you're like and we're we're not and, I, and i'm saying farmer not in a derogatory way like i normally do because back then farming yeah. was work Son of a bitch. There was no oh, GPS yeah. on the tractor. You know, you had a, you had a mule and a plow, and that's it. Exactly. And, um, but they weren't horsemen. You know, they were never known to be horsemen, but they were, like, there's a reason there was, you know, the term the Iowa, you know, corn-fed Iowa farm boy, because they, they're just massive yeah. from just just sheer manual labor all the time. And the good thing about us cowboys, we can bitch about how how dumb they got to be to do that because you could sit a horseback all day, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that's yeah. I kind of think the original rivalry was, but uh, the 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 farmers thought we were lazy and we thought they were dumb for working so damn hard. Exactly, exactly. You know they <laughs> they they plowed they plowed a plot of land. They didn't get to see what was over the hill, you know where the cowboy was right. trotting off and what's over the next bridge, what's over the next mountain, what's over at the end of the prairie, you know, I mean, we're seeing country and beautiful country that nobody's in, and, you know, still to this day, same way, you know, a farmer, he's got, a, and again, not derogatory, but, but he farms a plot of land and that's where he's got to stay. Whereas a cowboy, you drift around, day trash around, go work at different ranches, go see different things. You know, you still, we mm. still have that no matter kind of top deal where we want to go see what's over the next rise. We want to go see what next herd of horses, you know, or a big set of cows, you know, I mean, it's kind of, that's cool. So that's what we do, you know, and it's a, we kind of look down on somebody that wants to stay put, which they look down on us because they call us drifters, vagabonds, you know, just don't, yep. never going to amount to nothing because you always don't, you never settled on something. So, mm-hmm. You know, we, we'll fight that battle, I guess, till the, the end of time. Well, and and we get a we get a reputation for being dumb, but I've never met a higher concentration of philosophizers in any other group of people than than cowboys. I mean, we'll we'll <laughs> philosophize right. all goddamn day and and never blink an eye. Um, exactly. But but I yeah, like go back to to your show though. I, I just I, I got to thinking about that the other day, you know, and you know, because there's a big scene where uh, Tim McGraw, you know, he's he's not a farmer. He don't call himself a farmer. Just you know, uh, him and him and Sam Elliott kind of got in a little spat. And I was yeah. just thinking, you you go from from just walking behind a a mule, you know, dragging a plow, and then all of a sudden you're uh, you're gathering wild cattle. And driving them across the Brazos, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. that that's a steep learning curve. That's a very steep learning curve, <laughs> and I think that's why a lot of you read the history books and you read into it. 
a lot of them guys didn't make it. You know, I mean, they were mm-hmm. they got they were dead. They got killed. They get drowned. They you know they didn't make the deal. And I think that's what Taylor did with 1883 when he wrote it. You know, he just showed those trials and tribulations of the of the of those immigrants, of those cow drive guys, of a wagon train that takes on the path of going from Texas to Montana. Holy shit! You know, what I mean, just. It's insane that, you know, you look back on it today. And like I say, just driving up there in a vehicle at 75 miles an hour with everything that we did, it's a pretty damn good feat in itself, you know? Yeah. With my state conveniences. Oh, I know it. I, I so I, I, I moved <clears throat> from uh, western Kansas to western Nevada, and uh, and that was a that's a chore in and of itself, you know, just driving, driving horses and, 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 uh, a wife and kids out the, out this far. Uh, and like you said, that was just running down the interstate, um, you know, a little slower over the passes, but you know, for the most part, making pretty good time. You know, I did it a little over 24 hours, uh, in a gas yeah. pickup. So I had to stop and fuel quite, quite a bit, but you know, it's, uh, still, that's only a little over a day where shit. I mean, just, <laughs> just to go from here to <laughs> Reno, uh, you know, back then would take a couple days and exactly. it's again, <laughs> let alone, you know, that's you're, you're hoping to get started from Western Kansas in, in April, you know, March or April and try to get over the mountains before, you know, late September. Exactly. <laughs> that's a that's a trek. That's a trek. It's a feat. It really yeah. is. It's a feat, you know. I I, I uh, pushing cows all the while too. Just wild ass yeah. longhorns. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean it's like Yeah, I can't even it's like they and I go back, I, I one of the guys I worked with on the show, he gave me the book of uh if you had never read it, you need to check it out. It's called We Dr- We We Pointed Them North by Teddy Blue Abbott. It's oh, it's a great Teddy, book. It, it, oh, my gosh, it's awesome. I read that thing like in four days or four nights, you know, like we'd mm. get done with work. I'd lay that on my bunk, and I would go to read, and then the, I'd look up, and it'd be 1130, and I'm like, damn, I got to go to bed. I got to get up at 330 in the morning, you know, and go back to work. But that's a great book, you know. It tells you the real of it. He went up the trail, I think, four times. Yeah. You know, from in about that time period, from I think he said he was he was from Nebraska, but he came down to Texas with his father. He's from England, but he they moved to Nebraska. He came to Texas when he was fourteen and helped drive a herd of cows back to Nebraska with his dad that he bought or that his dad bought, and then he went up the trail four times, I think, and he went into montana a couple times he got damn close a couple times and then he went into montana a couple times and ended up settling in montana and in, in about 1883 1886 somewhere in there you know but that that book tells what the real story is and it's pretty rough pretty ragged i mean them guys are they were tough sobs there ain't no doubt about it i mean they were tough sobs like it is yeah. very impressive that somebody could live through what they lived through and still be alive in 1930. You know what I mean? I mean, it's crazy to me. Oh, but, it's uh, wild. Great book. Great book. If you have never read it, get it, read it. If you're interested in that kind yeah. of stuff, it's up a good one. Highly, highly recommended. It. It's on my shelf back here somewhere, but I, uh, I I just started reading uh, Charles Goodnight, uh, Cowman and Plainsman, and uh, I'm I'm only about f- four or five chapters in. But that's another one, you know, like uh, Charlie Goodnight, uh, all loving, you know. And then um, a- anything Charlie Russell's good, but Trails Plowed Under is a, is a really good book. It's kind of the same, yeah. written in the same style as we pointed up north, you know. Just I, I like how they they wrote they wrote how it sounded rather than how, how the word is supposed to be spelled. They, exactly. they wrote it out as, as a cow hand would say it. <laughs> it's easier for and me it, to read that way too. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, uh, it, it is, you know, and I'm, I'm usually a sucker for spelling, but I'm also, I also like, 
I, I, I don't, I, I don't fault it for that because you can just you can hear hear it better in your head when when it's out when it's exactly. like that. You know, it just exactly. it sets yeah, it, just up, it makes it. Just, yeah, it makes it a little more authentic and. I, I man, I just I love that that book. I, I love listening to those, or, or just you know, I, I listen to them on audiobooks sometimes, and then just reading them. I, I just love just reading those stories. Uh, you know, I was uh, I what was um I, I forget the name of the book, but it's uh it's basically uh, uh it kind of follows the life of Kit Carson, and that, like that's another yeah, sure. just just a badass like, that. That guy was just, I mean, son of a bitch. That, like, even for back then, he, he was he was just like a freak of nature. Yeah, exactly. No doubt. It's, you know, I mean, in, any of those books, uh, Jedediah Smith, Jeremiah Johnson, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. those books, Kit Carson, it, it, it blows my mind, you know. I mean, it just like those guys are, you know, they're just incredible. Like you say, freaks of nature, even back then. Yeah. It's amazing how, like it, it was where we come from. Those type of of men and women that just like forged across the plains, uh, and and it was a it was a battle of conquest. There, there's no, I mean, it's you know our our history books kind of try to church it up a little bit where it was just like, well, we were just settling. No, it was a it was a fight for to to take the land, and and the Indians lost because they didn't have the technology at the time and. They didn't have the right. disease resistance, uh, but it was uh, either way. Like the the our we're all descendants of of that uh, those initial clashes, you know, of of just two different cultures, and uh, and now we've got to where just we're uh, we're we're worried about a cold and and other <laughs> exactly. minor illnesses. You know, it's, it's like, weird. Yeah, yeah, they they're worried about. If there's going to be a shortage of toilet paper, yeah, yeah, it's as if uh, as if toilet paper has been around since the beginning of time, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like oh my god, come on now, people. But yeah, that's what we've got to. What is that? Uh, I read it the other day. Um, hard times, hard men. Yeah. Hard times make hard men. Hard men make easy times. Easy times make easy soft men. Soft men make hard times. Hard times make hard men. Yep. You know, it's just a, it, it's that deal. It's like, you know, I hate that we're getting to that point, but we are. We're, we're getting to that point pretty damn close. It, it's, but, it's, yeah. it's real. Uh, pe shit's just got absurd. It, it just continues yeah. to get more absurd. I, I, it it's, does, no it's hard to, hard to figure out what to do besides just, you know, sit back and laugh at all of it because that, that's about all you can do. Yeah. It's kind of like, ah, you know, I took a load of horses Monday. I left here early Monday morning. I went to Marathon, you know, I'm in down there in Marathon. It's very Southwest Texas, I guess what you would say. West Texas, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. But, uh, I took a load of horses down there, dropped off and went over to a buddy of mine who runs McCoy Remy Ranches. And out between Balmeray and Fort Davis and just going through that country, you know, just there's very few people. It's very, very, you know, population is very limited. Once you kind of get out of Fort Davis and, you know, in between there, and I don't know. It just, it brings back that old timey. Ah, it just, I love that country. You know, I love being out there. I love being just kind of, if you break down, there might not be another car to come by in, in a day. You know what I mean? I mean, you're just there. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you go back to that, almost to that, not to say I guess wouldn't be all the way back, but you kind of feel like you're on a trail drive, you know what I mean, way back when. Because mm -hmm. we've gotten so accustomed to being in, the, being in the city or being within 20 minutes or, you know, a 20-minute walk from the grocery store or whatever it is. I mean, we've got all kinds of modern-day conveniences. And then you – go out there and it's still the modern day, but it's like those conveniences aren't anymore. They're done. And it's like, yeah, man, this is cool. I like, I like it. You know I mean? Like most people freak out. They're like, Oh my God. Like, what would you do if you broke down? Like, uh, you walk till you find somebody that will help you, I guess. I mean, that's <laughs> just the way it is. 
Yeah, that, it really is. It's funny. I, I, uh, I was thinking back to when I was when I was growing up. My dad and his buddy started this uh, trail drive uh, or trail ride company uh, down in, and they just they just utilize public land uh, in, in southeast Colorado. And we'd start in Picture Canyon, uh, you know, which is kind of just west of 287, uh, right as you as you get into Colorado. And we'd we'd make like a week week long trail drive from Picture Canyon down to uh, Lake Gatling, Oklahoma, there by uh, Black Mesa. And I don't know, I went, I forget how many years in a row I did that, and it was always like uh, we'd always end up at. Lake Etling on the Saturday before Memorial Day, <clears throat> and and we'd always have a team in the ranch rodeo down there. And you know, after about your third or fourth one of those drives, and and you know, I'm helping, uh, you know, saddle all the dude horses and everything uh, in the morning, and and I'm I'm pretty young at this point, but you just get kind of bored with it. And then uh, looking back, and I'm I'm on you know closer to closer to 40 now than i am 30 and man i'm pretty damn lucky that that my dad made me go all those years you know because yeah after the first time was really fun second time was really fun and then after that it got to be a lot of work and i wasn't sure that i ever wanted to go again and now looking back i'm man i'm so lucky that he you know he made me go because uh, I saw a country yeah, I that a lot of people never, never will get to see, and it's it, it's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, I mean, it, it that is when you get to a spot where you finally realize that you're seeing shit that most everyday normal person will probably never ever see. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's it's, pretty lucky. It, it's wild because you know. And there's just so much history through there. And, and when you look back over the course of history, there's always been just very few people that lived in that area. It was because it was right. just tough country. And the, peop- the people that stuck it out there were tougher than, than anybody else. Because, um, you know, yeah. you, you, uh, you could go back through all those old Western movies, whether it's Lonesome Dove or, or, or anything else, and... Like, you know, you hear stories of the Stake Plains, the Llano Estacado, and then, you know, the the canyon country. And, like, that, that area up in, like, Oklahoma Panhandle, Texas Panhandle, New Mexico, Colorado, where all that, that five-state area there is just... There's been very few people that have ever lived there, but there's been a lot of really cool sh- and just weird, crazy shit that's happened through there. You know, we, right. we uh, just... A, a, a couple canyons over from, or I guess it's just one canyon over from Lake Etling, as a little place called Outlaw Canyon where Blackjack Ketchum and his his crew always uh, used to hole up. And now they've got a, or I don't know if they still do it, but they used to have a mountain man rendezvous there uh, that same weekend. So it was just, you know, it's just kind of cool how how it was all just paying tribute to you know the old timers and and how how that that part of the world became uh what it was and it's 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 cool to see it coming back in in uh you know in in film and uh and television uh because it's been a while since there's been a good western you know no doubt no doubt i i totally agree and i think it's uh <laughs> it's gonna kick off even some cooler ones you know i mean it, i think there's gonna be there's gonna be a rash and a run of Cowboy stuff, Western stuff, you know, I mean, that, I think it's going to be, you know, it's too popular not to. People always jump on the bandwagon of something that's popular, which, you know, I'm blessed that I got to work on it, and I'm blessed that I got to hang out with those guys, and I uh, enjoyed every minute of it. And You know, Taylor, I think, sharp as anybody. Everybody understands that he's very, very sharp, and he understands what he wants and where he's going and what he's doing, and uh, it's – it's all to benefit, you know, and to do better for the, what I would say, the American cowboy, the Western culture, you know, that we, we live in and that we strive to bring back and keep alive. And he's, uh, he's bringing that back and keeping it alive. And man, I, I give him, I give him props, you know, I mean, I'll reach out there and say, good job, dude. Way to go. I'm glad somebody's finally Mm -hmm. doing it, you know, 
And uh, so, like I say, I'm super proud that I got to work on it and lucky as I'll get out. You know, I don't know how the hell I ended up where I was, but I did. And, man, I won't ever take it for granted. I was, I was thrilled. And everybody I worked on the show with was, it, it was a cool, it was really cool. I mean, it, it really was. It was, uh, it was one of them deals where maybe a, oh, what do you call it? Once in a lifetime deal, I guess. Maybe, maybe it was a once in a lifetime deal. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So. Well, either way, I was trying to, my internet's slower than hell, but I'll, uh, I was going to pull up that, I guess I could pull it up my message, but uh, that picture you sent, um, from from your your shot there in the show, I was gonna say, you're you're giving old Sam Elliott a, a run for his money with that stash. That that was uh, <laughs> impressive. No way, man! You can't. There ain't nobody ever gonna take Sam's stash. I promise you, there ain't nothing. Nobody. That man's got a mustache. It's he's got his own zip code, baby. I'm telling you what. That yeah. That that deal is like his Sam, you know, I mean, I will say this. Everybody on the show <clears throat> excuse me again, but everybody on the show is really cool. But Sam is that guy that you just you gravitate towards him, you wanna be around him, you you wanna be in his presence because he is a cool cat. Like he's the coolest uncle that you always wanted to hang out with. That that uncle, that's Sam Elliott. I mean, he's the guy when I rode up to set I looked for Sam Elliott, and when I saw Sam Elliott, I rode over to him. And not because he was Sam Elliott, but the movie star, because he was Sam Elliott, the real dude. And I'd ride up, and Sam would yeah. be like, hey, Buster, and that Sam Elliott voice, hey, Buster, how are you today? Genuinely, genuinely concerned about your well-being, genuinely concerned about who you were, what you were doing. I mean, that guy, in my eyes, is a is one of my heroes now. And I never would think I would say that. Not because not because he's a movie star, because he's genuinely a good son of a bitch. Yeah. And well, you know, I, I talked I talked to Boots here a couple of weeks ago, and he he's kind of been keeping me updated a little bit on the on the film filming status uh, down there at the Sixes, and uh, yeah, and he had nothing but but good things to say about about Sam Elliott, and. You know, if if Boots likes him, I like him. So uh, that that's I mean yeah. that's all there is on that. And we even got to use Boots in it a little bit. Y'all watch out, you'll get to see Boots Elliot. Or yeah, Boots O'Neill, not Boots Elliot. Hell, I think it's Cotton. But Boots. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I can't wait. I I know they uh, I know they had Buster Welch in. Uh, in the latest season of Yellowstone and, uh, and boots boots told me that he, uh, he got paid to help, uh, drive a pond. And he thought that was, that was just something else. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. You know, I mean, we, and that's another thing, like Taylor used a lot of the guys at the sixes, you know, that worked there that are full-time guys and, he used them in some shots and did some stuff and, and, you know, which, which also, which also brings some coolness to him. You know, I mean, he, he could have very easily paid somebody else to do what they did, you know, but he used those guys. And I think that's another, it's another feather in Taylor's hat that he takes care of the people that he wants to help, you know, the locals. And he does, he does a great job doing that. He uses a lot of local help and a lot of local talent, you know, I mean, a lot of the guys were, you know, the the main guys are Fort Worth or, you know, I mean, they were from around and he, uh, Taylor sees that and he understands that and he does that a lot. So props to him on that as well. So, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's cool being a part of it. No doubt about it. Yeah. I, it sounds like, like a really, really awesome experience. And, you know, Yellowstone, like going going back to like we were saying earlier, we, we'll bitch about everything and anything, uh, even if we don't want to. We're still gonna bitch about it because it's kind of what we do. But I I, I really do got to give Taylor Sheridan uh, a hell of a lot of credit. But more than anything, he made some really good fucking shows. I, I you can nitpick yeah. it all you want, but I like Yellowstone. 
I really, really yeah. like 1883. Like, I, I don't even like Tim McGraw, but like he's play. He did a hell of a good job at, with his character. I like I. I like the show. I, yeah. I thought it was a really well done show. It was a good story. Uh, the 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 cowboy and scenes there. I mean, it's nothing too special, but it's still pretty no. damn cool that that they're they're doing. The, you guys are doing it like it's like it was supposed to be done. <coughs> and right. and I, I get. I I've heard. Um, oh, I, I've heard like other you know kind of Hollywood types talk about like certain certain things that just don't like military stuff and then and the western stuff in general it just it's so hard to to do with with your normal actors because they just they're yeah. it's like a just a fish out of water but like that's that's what makes sam elliott so such a, a western actor is he doesn't look out of place on a horse like he he looks like no, he belongs he on a horse you know, yeah, there, there's he, uh, a certain does very well. certain actors that, yeah, he does very that you well. can tell. Yeah, right. so like Sam Elliott, Robert Duvall, uh, you know, Tom Selleck, all all those, Kevin Costner, even like the good Western actors. Part of it is they're already good actors, but they look like they they're where they're supposed to be on a horse, and th- and that just adds to yeah. it, because. There, there's been several really good act, like the the dude that played uh, one of the, um, he he was uh, Kevin Costner's rival on the Hatfields and McCoys. I forget which one uh, he was, but he's a hell of an actor, but couldn't ride a horse to save his life. And yeah. you're just like, ah, there, there's like guys like us. There, there's there's certain things like that where it just sticks out like a sore thumb, and then it just kind of ruins the rest of the 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 show for you and i haven't seen any of that yet you know like everybody that that's on a on a horse or or driving a team that i've seen so far they look like they just or they they at the very least they don't look out of place exactly yeah you know i mean they they in taylor props to taylor again on that he prepped all that stuff for that reason right there i mean i wasn't involved with it personally because I was tending to the cattle and we were trying to get all that stuff situated when we, when I started with them, but they had a cowboy, what they call a cowboy camp for all the actors. They taught them, they put them on the wagons. <clears throat> they put them on the wagons with people that understand wagons. They made them hitch teams. They made them drive teams. They saddled their horses. They rode, they roped, they did all that stuff for about three weeks, four weeks prior to starting any filming. So perhaps, to, you know, props to Taylor on that for doing that, you know, because yeah, you know, like you said, it kind of throws it off. And, you know, those guys would have showed up. And they said, okay, get on a horse. And they don't even know what side, you know, to get on or get off of. So they at least understood. And like you say, they didn't look out of place. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I like I said, I, I thought it was, it was well done. It was cool seeing you seeing you on on tv or uh you know i guess i guess it's tv that you're on the internet yeah. or whatever you know what whatever the fuck you call it nowadays but like you're you're in like yeah. a real production and uh and it that was cool it's uh um, yeah it was uh, it was very <laughs> you know everybody asked <laughs> everybody asked me how was it i mean did you really like it and i'm like hell yeah i really liked it it was fun you know i mean i got to do something a lot of people know, you know, it's kind of like being a cowboy. I got to, I get to do, got to do something for five and a half months that not everybody gets to do, you know, not everybody gets the opportunity to do. You're damn right. I had fun, you know, and it, it was, uh, it was one of them deals where it was maybe a once in a lifetime experience. I don't think it will be, but you know, I mean, I think there's going to be some other stuff come from it. And if it does great, if it does, yeah, man, I'll go back to punch of cows and trading a few horses and, doing what I do, you know, I mean, it is, it, it, it's one of them deals where everybody's like, what are you going to do now? I'm like, nah, I got to go back. I, I fed cows all day today and broke ice. <laughs> same shit, you know, <laughs> same shit I was doing before yeah. I got that job. So, you, you were yeah, looking I mean, for a job when you found that one. Exactly, you know, I mean, that's that's the whole deal. <laughs> and it was, uh, yeah, hell, it was, it was cool. It was really it was a it was an eye opening experience. That's a that's a big beast, you know. I mean, 
to do what we did in the time frame that we did it is pretty much, I mean, from, and, and I only know this from the rest of the crew and the rest of the people that have done lots of this stuff. They were like, man, this is, this is pretty unheard of. You know what I mean? It's, uh, they, they, yeah, it, it's, it, it really was, it was pretty unheard of. And we had, a, I mean, it was a monster of a deal and I don't know, I give props to all them higher ups, Taylor and his crew and the directors and all them people that, you know, to keep that circus going the way they kept it going and keeping everything in check and where they need, it, it was unbelievable, man. Cause I'm telling you there's, and I don't, don't quote me on this cause somebody will go back and check it or whatever. But I'm going to say at any one given time, there's 400 to 500 people working on this thing at the same time. So like we would have a base camp set up and I'm talking about like a small city, you know, for everything yeah. that's there. And we would get done at 11 o'clock one night. They would move base camp to another location and we would show up there at five 30 the next morning. And that city is there and moving and operating. I'm like, how huh. in the hell did they do that? <laughs> you know I mean? It's a pretty good it's... task for us to, move our cows, our portable pens, our water troughs, our horses, and get them there. And these people have moved a whole complete city, you know. And, and when I say city, I'm talking about trucks and trailers and, you know, the catering and the porta johns and the camera trucks and the wardrobe trucks. And, like, it's just, it's, it's insane, you know, to me. I'm like, wow, how the hell did they do that? It, it, well, it, it, that's exactly what Boots was saying too, because he he said uh, he quadrupled the population of uh, of Guthrie just by having that film yeah. crew down there. Like that, that's yeah, wild. no doubt. You know, it is. It is crazy. You know, I mean, it is unbelievable how how proficient they were. It was. I mean, and props to them guys because they. You know, I met a lot of the transpo guys. I met a lot of the catering guys. I met a lot of. You know, I mean, you're talking about feeding that crew, just feeding that crew, you know, I mean, is a freaking undertaking in itself just to go buy the groceries. Oh, yeah. And, that's, yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's a lot of beef, food. you know. It is insane. And then you look back you at imagine, it. imagine, like, if... Oh, go <laughs> ahead, go ahead. Say, then you look back at it, so you flop back over to the livestock side of it, I mean, we hauled 60 head of cows around, 100, you know, at one time we had about 160 head of horses between wagon horses and riding horses and, you know, cast horses and that kind of stuff. And then you got enough people to take care of all that. Just moving the feed, the horse feed and the, you know, the feed for the animals is a, I mean, that's a major task in itself. Oh, yeah. You know, well, then you, you got those uh, those horses are, uh, yeah, well, and those, like, especially those draft horses, they're pulling a wagon there that, that yeah. whole, you know, for, through different, however many exactly. takes they're going to do that day, and those little horses got to be pr pretty well wore out by the time that's that shit's all, all dead, said and done. Oh, I promise you, you know, them horses are, and, you know, props to the livestock coordinator, Kenneth Shelton, and he did a great job, you know. I mean, he he uh, he coordinated all that stuff and kept everybody in line and kept it going and doing and you know, I mean, along with everybody else. I, one time, I think there were sixty five, seventy of us wranglers and livestock people, you know. And so it's a, you know, it's a, it's it's crazy how it all worked. But it it, it was, you know, as of this time that we're talking about, it was it's pretty unheard of to do what we did to make that show. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, I think Magnificent Seven was pretty big when they did it, but it was a movie, you know, I mean, it wasn't a TV series, it wasn't, it was shot over a year or so, you know, I mean, we did what we did yeah. in five months, half months. Well, and, you know, like Magnificent Seven's a, what, probably a three-hour movie, yeah. and uh, you guys <laughs> filmed 11 episodes, so that's 11 hours yes, of content of like finished right. content. And right. who knows how much, how much, like how many hours of film just gets wasted. Oh, 
you know, it's a bullet. Or, or fo- I, you can't really say it film anymore. They don't they don't use film, but like the the footage, you know, it's there's right. there's got to be like years worth of footage that just 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 gets wasted, you know. Yeah, you know, and and, and then you talk about too, like what really opened my eyes is like I guess. It's not, yeah, there's some hard work involved in it. And when I say hard work, I mean like physically hard work where what the hours Mm -hmm. those guys put, hours that we put in, you're talking about, I mean, 90-hour weeks in five days. You're talking about 20-hour days, four or five days in a row. Then you get a break, and then we do 16-hour days for seven days in a row. You know I mean? You're talking about grinding like – grinding grinding lots of hours we put in lots of hours everybody did you know but especially the livestock people because it's just like typical yeah, anything I can else. Imagine. yeah i mean you still got livestock so you got to feed you got to catch you got to saddle you got to be there so where they say you, we need to be there at seven we got to start at four thirty. you know to get everything gathered pinned loaded hauled sorted Loaded on the trailer, unloaded, you know, back to the, it, it was a, it was a monster. I mean, like we ground, we put in a lot of hours. And, uh, it was I, a, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> that's, yeah, uh, it was, uh, that's wild. I, I would, I'd like to, to just, I, I don't want to be ever in a movie, but I, I would like to just watch, you know, uh, you know how how it all comes together for for like a day just to just kind of get a glimpse of it but that's that's yeah, wild I, I mean it's impressive like i said I, I i'm just glad that somebody's like trying to make something like that again because they're they're just you you know you there's so many books like we were mentioning you know point them pointed them north yeah uh, I, I think it was called blood and blood and thunder is uh the kit carson book yeah. but uh, just yeah. th- like you can go, there's so many of those books like that. They're just excellent books and there's such great stories. And you're like, somebody ought to make a movie of that or, or make a show. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's cool to see, see that being done and, and, and being done in a pretty, pretty damn realistic way. Like I, I, I thought I, I, the way they portrayed everything and, and then uh, uh hats off to taylor sheridan he's got some some uh you know he's got some pushback from your traditional like western folks because he uses too many too many fuck bombs and uh and whatever else but i like it because it's like you you and i know know just as well as anyone else that that (laughs) has cowboyed for a living they like sailors ain't got shit on cowboys as far as the the mouth goes no, and, and no, so not at all. You know, I, I, I was. It, it, it brings some authenticity to it. Right. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, there. You know, sometimes there's. And in 1883, they kind of curved it back a little bit. Yellowstone, I think, uses it quite a bit. You know, and just it's a. Uh, yeah, I mean, you get a bunch of cowboys around the back of the pickup telling old re-ride stories and cow catching and wild donkey rides. You know, I mean, it's it, it, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of f bombs thrown down. You know, I mean, it, it's just the way we talk. It it kind of yeah. I guess it. I don't know. It, it <laughs> it's just the way it is, and I think it's always been that way. You know, I mean, it, you. Uh, well, I think so. You get too. a bunch of guys together I, and, I, and and. and Men, I wouldn't say guys. You put a bunch of men together, and that's that's just the way it happens. So, yeah, I'm with you. It's like maybe he can curve it a little bit. Maybe he can't. Maybe you can bitch about it. Maybe you shouldn't. I mean, but what? Come on, man. It's a good show. They're bringing a lot of attention to the Western culture, Western civilization. You know, the cowboy. Anything that touches the cowboy, everybody wants to be a cowboy right now, which is good for me and you and everybody involved in it. That's, that's right. And at the very least, like the amount of Gunsels that we'll have to make fun of is going to be endless f- for a long while. Like the the, yeah. the Gunsel yeah. watching is has never been higher. 
<laughs> no doubt. Dale Brisby, I'll have a job for a long time, only. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I got a I got a question from you <laughs> here from a listener. Uh, Lydia is asking uh, any tips for impressing a young cowboy. Any from a girl? Yeah. Oh man! Uh, any like tips? I did, I don't, oh, I'm not sure if um, we go with the easy one is just be female. That 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 usually yeah, helps. Just, yeah, just be female and uh, shave your underarms and don't smell. <laughs> I guess you know. I mean, and I guess that smell depends that's, on what that's cowboy. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. Just uh, yeah. Be be sweet. Smile and shave your underarms and use the odor. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably about right. About right. Um, and don't tell. I, I will what say, to do like, if you if you really, yeah. Um, if you find out who his favorite bit maker is and uh, and, and get him something nice, but that you got you it's really good, better huh? like that guy because bits are not cheap. Yeah, exactly. Bits are not cheap. And more than likely, he's going to, you know, I mean, unless you really do something for him, he's probably just going to take the bit and go, you know, six weeks down the road, you probably won't ever see him again. Yeah, well, and then he, he won't ever see that bit again either because he uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he lost all his money in a poker game or something. <laughs> exactly. He had to trade it off, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh shit! No doubt. Well, Buster, it's I. I it sounds like your voice is is given out on you. I hate to you. You've uh, <laughs> you've entertained for plenty of time. I, I'd I'd love to talk to you more if uh, and, you know. But it sounds like your voice is given out, and I don't want you to. I don't want you to oh, to but, do any more than. Dude, I'm good. You want to talk but, more? Uh, let's man, talk. If you end it, let's roll. End it. It don't oh. matter to me. I'm good. Okay, well let's let's keep rolling. Well, I, let's uh, let's say we'll roll this over to the to the Patreon uh, side of things, and uh, maybe you can open up a little bit more about about some of the the crazier shit you saw behind the scenes. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, well, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, if you want to hear uh, the rest of this, head over to patreon.com, burning daylight, and. Uh, You'll be able to to hear the rest of this. And for everybody else, uh, move your ass. We're 